Hi, Gary Stearman of Prophecy Watchers. Stay with us. We're going to be talking about what will soon become your favorite subject. And that subject is heaven. We have Dr. Uh, Larry Allison here in studio with us today. He's written a new book. It's called A Place Called Heaven. Everybody wants to know about heaven. Right, Larry? Heaven oh. is the eternal home of the saints. It's the place we're all headed toward as believers, and, and uh, we need to know about heaven. Uh, before the, the program uh, began today, Larry and I were discussing uh, the simplicity of heaven, but when you bring it to the level of the church, the congregation, theology, it can get really complicated. And a lot of people say, I don't want to touch that subject. There are so many points of view. It's so complicated. Well, it's not. Well, Paul said in his letter to the Corinthians that he did not want them to be led away from the simplicity that was in Christ. And the reality is this, the, the gospel is a very simple, easy to understand message. And, and I've heard it said it takes a preacher to confuse it. But uh, the reality of heaven is uh, a reality that we will all as believers experience. But sadly, too many people just don't know too much about heaven. I've talked to a lot of people who just say, oh, let's talk about that later. This is not really who I am, but it is. If you're a Christian, uh, you need to know about heaven. And I'm going to chapter six of Larry's book, right. A Place Called Heaven, and we're going to talk about uh, the timeline of your future. Because as a believer, you and I are on a timeline, and Larry has arranged this chapter uh, to put you, if you will, on track to heaven in a way that's easily understood. Well, the Bible clears it clearly tells us, Gary, uh, exactly what's going to happen in our future for every Christian. And if we put it in a chronological order and walk through it step by step, we can look at it this way. Okay. Every Christian is going to enter heaven in one of two ways. You're either going to have your physical body quit working, and you're absent from the body and present with the Lord, as Paul said, or you will remain and be here when the rapture takes place. Now, if you uh, pass away and your body quits working and you're absent from the body and pres present with the Lord, you're in a place called paradise. And when you're in paradise, you have a spirit body. You have certain physical attributes that will be different from your glorified body that is to come. Now, the spirit body is the body that a Christian has after their body quits and before the rapture. And the Bible gives us a glimpse of what that body will be like. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when Jesus was on the cross and there were two thieves and one of them rejected Jesus and one of them acknowledged that he was the Messiah. Right. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Well, Jesus had clearly prophesied. He said, in the same way that Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. For three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus was executed, when he was crucified, his body, his physical body went into a grave, but his spirit body went into paradise. And that's where he was. Today. Yes, Same day. That, that day. That very day he went into paradise. Now what's it like in paradise? Well, Jesus told a story in, in Luke about a rich man and Lazarus. And this was not just a parable, although Jesus did tell a lot of parables, but this was an actual story of an event that had taken place. A rich man had died, and a man named Lazarus had died. And Lazarus went into the bosom of Abraham, into paradise, in the heart of the earth. And the rich man went into Hades, which is a compartment in the heart of the earth. And both of them had their spirit bodies. And their spirit bodies had certain attributes. Jesus said 
that the rich man had regret because he wanted to go back and have his brothers told about the gospel. Uh, the rich man had physical feelings, although he didn't have a physical body, he had physical feelings because remember he wanted a drop of water mm -hmm. to just touch his tongue so he could have some relief from the torment. Lazarus, on the other hand, was comforted. He, so there was memory, uh, there was desire, and there was physical feeling, even though they didn't have a physical body. Hmm. Then the scripture tells us that the Christians who pass away before the rapture, they're present with the Lord in paradise. When the rapture takes place, all of the Christians who are in paradise will return with Jesus to the earth. I've often thought it kind of interesting that when the Lord himself descends from heaven with a shout, he's not going to be by himself. Hmm. He's going to have the spirit bodies of all of the born again saints. They're all going to be with him. And uh, when he descends from heaven with a shout, uh, as it says in Thessalonians, he, uh, he, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us again, where have the dead in Christ been and how well, are they going to the rise? The dead in Christ is referring to their bodies. Okay. And you and I talked about this a little bit earlier, but in order to completely understand this, uh, what we're even talking about right now, we have to understand that man was created as a three-part being. God is a three-part being. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, we are a three-part being. We are spirit, soul, and body. And so when our physical body quits working, it dies and goes to the ground. As a Christian, our spirit doesn't go into the ground that way. Our spirit goes to paradise to be present with the Lord. Then when Jesus returns, our spirit comes with him. The Bible clearly says that Jesus will bring with him those who sleep in him. Mm -hmm. And that's referring to those saints who have gone on. And the dead in Christ that rise, that's talking about the physical body. So it doesn't matter if your body is in a, a casket neatly put away, or if it's in an urn, or if it's been scattered all over the earth or in the ocean, God will supernaturally bring the dead bodies of Christians together and they will be caught up into the air. At that point in time, Jesus is in the air, the dead bodies are in the air, and the living spirits are in the air. And then we who are alive are caught up. Now it's interesting that the Bible doesn't say how long it will be before we who are alive are caught up. That's right. It could be moments, it could be much longer. But we do know this, there's going to be enough time between when the dead bodies are raised and caught up into the air and we who are a living that God thought it important to tell us because we are going to be observing this, obviously. And uh, to, to use a, a term my granddaughter would use, God did not want us freaking out <laughs> when we see all these dead bodies going up into the air. Yeah. So he, he pre-warned us of that or pre-told us. So then a, a miraculous thing happens then. When we who are alive are caught up and the dead bodies are caught up and our spirits, the spirits of those who have passed come back with Jesus, the Bible tells us that they're in the air in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, a miracle takes place. And we are changed. Corruption do drops off, we take on incorruption. Mortality drops off, we take on immortality. And we become as He is, we become glorified like Jesus. And then he takes us to heaven. So for us who are born again believers, that's the pathway to get to heaven. Now what's interesting is when we get to heaven, right off the bat we're going to have the judgment seat of Christ. And who's going to be at the judgment seat of Christ? Every single born again believer. Paul in two different letters said to two different churches, he said, we will all referring to himself also, he said, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Mm. And we will give an account of what we have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. 
So wow. I've heard people say, so that means that's when we decide, God decides if we're going to go to heaven or hell? No. No, because if you're at the judgment seat of Christ, you've already made it. Right. You're a born again believer. You're a part of the body of Christ. Your eternal life started when you received Jesus back on earth. Well, you know, Larry, as you're talking, I, I remembered something. I've always uh, referred to the judgment seat of Christ as a, a, an exit interview. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot more than that. But to think of it as an exit interview, you know, it's like, uh, okay, you've, you've been on earth for X number of years, and now uh, you, you're up, going to be interviewed, and we don't know how exactly, but we are exiting our life on earth and entering into a new life. And that interview, I think, is going to be very interesting. It's going to be very fascinating. Somebody may say, well, why would we even need that? Right. If we're born again. Well, there are awards that are going to, awards and rewards that are going to be handed out. Uh, do you remember in Revelation, Jesus said, behold, I am coming quickly. Yeah. And my reward is with me to render unto every man according to what he has done. And I've heard people say, well, Jesus is coming back with salvation. No, it's not salvation he's coming back with because salvation is not based upon what we have done. Salvation is based upon what he has done. So if he's coming back with rewards, I'm believing and I think that I have scriptural proof to show that these rewards will be given at the judgment seat of Christ. There we will be either rewarded or not rewarded based upon what we've done. Now let me ask you a question about the marriage supper of the Lamb. <clears throat> uh, we read about that in the context, uh, in the very close uh, context of the things that are happening in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. And we wonder, well, okay, when does the marriage supper of the Lamb happen? And uh, how does it fit in the context of all these other things that you're talking about? Well, I believe that the reward ceremony or the exit interview uh, is the preparing of the bride. And okay. the bride is being, going through their exit interview and, and then comes the marriage supper of the Lamb. Ah. And that takes place in heaven. Now, all of this takes place during this seven years while on earth, uh, all hell is breaking loose. There is horrible devastation on the earth. Jesus referred to it as the great tribulation. And this is when uh, judgment is poured out by the Lamb upon the earth. But we are going to be in heaven. And yeah. we're going to miss all of that. Then at the end of that seven years, another great event takes place. And that's the church adorned and it also says that we have our robes and we're with him and we come back to earth with Jesus. And this is when Jesus actually touches down on the Mount of Olives. And there's a great change in the geographical uh, area. The, the land masses are moved and Jesus sets up his kingdom. Now also at that particular time, there's some other things that happen. Uh, the believers are not necessarily involved in this. But that's when he separates the sheep from the goats. And those who have lived on the earth during the tribulation, if they took the mark of the beast, if they worshiped the prophet, they're marked as goats and they're moved out into eternal damnation. Uh, the ones who uh, received Jesus as the Messiah, uh, they uh, move into, he'll say, enter into my kingdom. Now they'll not be a part of the church, mm -hmm. you know, and that's something that we need to understand. They'll not be a part of the church. Uh, they will have physical flesh and blood human bodies living on the earth during the millennium. But we as the church, we have glorified bodies. That uh, the way the youth would look at it, we're, we're almost superheroes in, in some respect, you know. Able to do... Uh the things that angels do, able to, to, to uh, travel in ways that we've never thought of before. Uh, we have uh, understanding uh, on a much higher level than we have now. Uh, See, there are people who are debating, and I, I ran into a man a few years ago who said, uh, Pastor, if you're right, 
if all of a sudden one day I see that you're gone and all the other Christians are gone and, and that Jesus was the Messiah and he came back and he, as you put it, raptured the church out of here. Right. He said, that day when I see that, I'm going to know you are right and I'll become a Christian. I'll receive Jesus as my Savior. And I told him, I said, that's well and good, but you won't be a part of the church. That gate has closed. The church will be in heaven. We'll have the judgment seat of Christ and the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage will be over. And so at the end of the millennium, or excuse me, at the end of the tribulation, you will, you will endure. This is what Jesus was referring to when He said, those who endure to the end will be saved. I said, you'll be saved, mm -hmm. but you won't be a part of the church. You'll be living on the earth and I don't want you to miss this opportunity. Right. And not only that, body. not only that, Larry, but you, you, not only will you not be a part of the church, you're going to remain on earth uh, at a time when things are not doing all that well. They're not so well. And it's going to be difficult to be on the earth during that seven years. Indeed. Now let's talk about uh, something else here. Uh, we, we've gone through the, uh, this exit interview, if you will. We have uh, gone through the, the marriage supper of the Lamb. We have uh, glorified bodies. Uh, where, do, where do we go from there? Well, during this time when Jesus comes back and sets up His kingdom, He will take the false prophet and the, and the Antichrist and, and all of those who came against the holy city, and they will be cast out. At that point in time, Satan will be bound. An angel comes down from heaven, a special angel, and Satan will be put in a bottomless pit. And he'll be there under lock and key for 1,000 years. And Jesus will set up his kingdom on the earth. Now, nations that uh, supported Israel during the tribulation will be considered sheep nations, and they will exist during the millennium. Nations that sided in with the Antichrist and the false prophet and uh, was against Israel, uh, they, those nations will no longer exist as national states. And the Bible tells us that during the, during the millennium, during the 1,000 year reign of Christ, that we, the church, will rule and reign with Him. Now we'll be ruling and reigning out of the heavenly Jerusalem because we have superhuman bodies that are not affected by gravity. The Jews will be ruling and reigning out of earthly Jerusalem in physical bodies. And so for this 1,000 years it will be a glorious time. And I believe that part of what we will be doing in heaven for the seven years during the tribulation is being trained on how to rule and reign with Him as under rulers, mm -hmm. under the the great ruler, which is the Lord Jesus. And, and so you could look at our birth, our death, our resurrection, uh, the, the uh, if you will, ceremonies that we go through following our resurrection, uh, the thousand year millennium, you could look at that almost as a preparation for something huge. A preparation for eternity, if you will. Actually, all of this is just the beginning. Because at the end of the thousand years, then there's a resurrection of the unrighteous dead. All who were unrighteous from the beginning until the end of the millennium, they're resurrected and that's the great white throne judgment. Wow. But as believers, we won't be there. That's good because we have already been judged and we're already ruling and reigning with Him. Uh, you're a pastor. Uh, you have many, many years in pastoral service. Uh, you have seen uh, the Lord at work. You also see what's going on right now in our world. And some would say it's not very pretty. We're seeing uh, society cracking at, at not only at the edges, but sometimes through the center. And it's, it's looking grim. We shouldn't be surprised. Uh, this, this world's going to go through judgment. But we, and, and this, is, this is where this book comes in, right here a place called heaven. We're not uh, going to be affected over a long period of time by what's coming. Well the good news is, is when all of this actually culminates and takes place, 
nation coming against nation and, and all these wars, we're going to be gone. But now we can see the precursor to much of this. You know, the, uh, the Greek word for nation is ethnos, which actually right. would be translated better ethnic group. An ethnic group against ethnic group. And we're seeing the beginning of that that's going to be very prominent during the Great Tribulation. But we're seeing the, the, uh, the, the, the sprinkle before the storm, so to speak. But when the storm takes place, praise God, we're not appointed to the wrath that is to come. We're going to be gone. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm not sure you have the answer to it, but I think it's a good discussion question. Uh, we see uh, society cracking apart at the seams. And we as Christians uh, also n notice that we're living in what the Bible calls the Laodicean age when the church uh, has relaxed and has given up its charter, its great charter that, that was given by the Lord who said, I want you to do this, 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 and this. And, and a lot of the modern churches have fallen away from that and they're not doing what the Lord asked them to do. Uh, we're living in a particular period of time right now. <clears throat> And we are looking toward heaven. But on the other hand, what should we be doing as we see all these happening, things happening? Uh, how should Christians react? And, and I'm, I'm talking to you out there. You know what I'm talking about when I say society is cracking around the edges. Uh, what should we be thinking and doing right now? I think as believers, the one thing that we must do is operate on the spiritual force that God has provided for us. Now, in, in the spirit realm, there are two major spiritual forces. One is faith and one is fear. In the English language, we have opposites. If I were to say hot, you would say cold. If I say east, you say west. And these are just natural. You don't even have to think about these yeah. things. But in the Hebrew language, there are opposites also. And one of the opposites that got lost in translation was the opposite of faith is fear. Hmm. Jesus operated on the spiritual substance of faith. The enemy operates on the spiritual substance of fear. Faith activates the promises of God. Fear opens the door for the enemy to come in and wreak havoc in our life. Uh, Jesus said very clearly in John 10.10, the thief, referring to our enemy, he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the mission statement of the devil. But then Jesus' mission statement is the rest of that verse where he says, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So I think the number one thing for us to do is not allow ourselves as Christians to get into the area of fear. Uh, you know, Job put it this way. He says, what I greatly feared has come upon me. Hmm. We need to stay in faith. What is faith? Faith in its simplest form. Of course, the great definitions of faith, of course, Hebrews 11.1. 1. But the simplest form of faith is just believing God. If we could just take what He's told us, take His promises, and believe them in our heart, then we would eliminate the fear and the panic that's going on in the world today. You know what? Uh, you've just described what happened to me when I read your book. Because it, it causes you to focus on faith and the, the fact that, yes, there is a path certain ahead of me and I'm going to follow up by faith and everything's going to be okay. And boy, does that ever chase away. It changes everything. It does. Well, you know, Romans 10, 17 is the only place in the Bible where it tells us how to get faith. Hmm. And it, it gives us a spiritual principle. It says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. What's interesting is the spiritual force of fear comes the same way. That's right. Fear comes by hearing, and hearing by the words of the enemy. So for Christians, I, I would think that one of the main things that we need to do is you've got to quit listening to the enemy and start listening to God. You've got to read what God's Word says and believe it, and quit listening to the negative report of the enemy. We're talking uh, with Dr. Larry Ollison, who's written this book. It's called A Place Called Heaven. Uh, I've read it, uh, and I'm serious when I say I have read it. I've got a copy here uh, with my bookmarks in it. 
And believe me, it's a good read. It's easy, incredibly informative, and most of all, it is uplifting. It's going to give you a real spiritual boost. Again, a place called heaven. Uh, Let's break for just a moment so you can find out how how you can get your very own copy, plus bonuses uh, by Larry that come with it. Heaven. It's a place we've all dreamed about since the day we first discovered God's wonderful plan for our future. Almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus told his disciples he would go away and prepare a special place just for them and for us. It's been almost 2,000 years, and I don't know about you, but I'm ready and waiting for his return. As our world disintegrates into chaos right before our eyes, Larry takes our focus to an entirely new place, free of pain, tears, violence, and death. And the very best part, we get to experience a lifetime of joy with Jesus. We have a special gift offer for you today. Larry's new book, A Place Called Heaven, is available for your gift of $20 to Prophecy Watchers. Shipping is included in the United States. And if you enjoy Pastor Allison's teachings as much as we do, you'll enjoy his other encouraging materials. The Heaven and the Afterlife package includes Larry's two books, A Place Called Heaven and the Paradise of God, plus his 10 DVD series on Bible prophecy called Your Best Days Are Yet to Come. If you've always wanted to understand Bible prophecy from Genesis to Revelation, this is a great place to start. Finally, we've included a bonus DVD, The Luciferian Flood, a message Gary once called the most amazing message he'd ever heard on a little known subject. We'd love to send you Larry's two books, the 10 DVD set, and the special bonus DVD for your gift of $80 to Prophecy Watchers, and we'll include shipping anywhere in the United States. When you give to support Prophecy Watchers, you not only receive these valuable resources, you're helping us further our ministry's mission. Your support enables this ministry to continue to take this message of hope to millions who have no idea how to get to heaven. We look forward to hearing from you soon. Call us at the toll-free number on the screen or go to our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to support this relevant and vital work. Remember, everything that we are doing at Prophecy Watchers is made possible with your support. So be encouraged. Jesus is coming soon, just as he promised. Well, I hope you avail yourself uh, of this offer. And Larry, we've got a few more minutes, luckily. This has been a great conversation. I I love talking about our new home, the heaven. And by the way, we could be there sooner than we think. (laughs) Well, it's one of those things where everyone wants to go but when you talk about going today, they, they say no. Uh, they, they'd rather wait a few days. But that's only because we don't have the full revelation of how wonderful heaven really is. Wow. My name is Gary Stearman, and I say yes. <laughs> and thanks, Larry. It's been great talking you. to you. Hey, keep watching, everybody. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter or follow us at facebook.com slash prophecywatchers. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.